Hello and welcome to this uh, little demonstration in Construct 3 where I will be making uh, a little timer where I can see the number of milliseconds easily using the date plugin. Well if you remember let's make a new project call it test or whatever. So if you remember you have got the timer behavior of course and in the timer behavior we give it the number of seconds and it will count down to uh, from that timer which is ideal but it, you give it a number of seconds and if you query the expression uh, current time you'll also uh, have uh, the exact duration in seconds uh, but I uh, suppose I want to do that in milliseconds well um, there's a very easy simple solution nowadays because you also have the date plugin so let's add the date plugin like that uh, we're also uh, going to add in a button to start the timer and of course a little text to see the result of that timer now i'm going to start the timer for let's say 10 seconds um, and then let it count down in seconds and milliseconds all right so let's do this um, first of all um, i will need a home button click of course and here I will start the timer, but how will I do that? Well, actually, we'll have a, we are needing a variable right now. Let's call it start. And this is the starting point from which the timer will start. So when I click the button, I will initialize the value of start. That value will and I will use date.now. Date up now is the number of milliseconds since the 1st of January 1970. So it's an always changing uh, number every millisecond. And I will add that 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds, of course. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll keep on using that date up now, but uh, subtracting the current date up now from the start so I have the number of milliseconds that has passed since I clicked that button so now let's see for example but it can't start until I've clicked that button so what I'll do is I'll add an event no let's first add a global number let's call the global number go and we initialize it to zero so I will add an event compared to values while go is one, of course. So I'll make sure that go becomes one when I click the button. And on start of layout, for example, start of layout, I will set the text, set the text to click the button, something like that. So when go, pressing go, um, we can do this. Text set text being date dot now minus start. No, vice versa of course. Start minus date dot now. Let's see what happens. And there we have it. It's counting down in milliseconds. Uh, but now I want to add seconds, the colon milliseconds, for example. Um, we can also use something from the date plugin. For example, date to timer seconds of that colon and colon and date to timer timer milliseconds start minus date dot now like that then we've got All right uh, and then we'll just add a condition and make a subcondition uh compared to values uh when I tell it that start minus date dot now becomes less or equal than zero 
then I say stopped, for example. Stopped. Yeah. But now, of course, it keeps on going. We could as well set go to zero. And now you might think, why do you need the two timer seconds? Because it's a very simple calculation. You divide it by 1000, and then you've got, uh, if you do the floor of that, you've got the number of seconds, and the remainder is the number of milliseconds. It's just do that calculation in here. Yeah, you could do that. But suppose you want to have hours and minutes and seconds and stuff like that. There's going to be quite some calculations done in there, and it's quite, going to be uh, somewhat more complicated. But using these date do timer seconds and two timer milliseconds uh, functions of the date plugin makes life just a bit easier. So that's it. I hope you liked it. As always, please like and subscribe. And see you next time.